Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scott Hagnes. This is Conversations, Fitness, Wellness, Longevity. Scotty, looking scruffy. Scruffy, yeah. I forgot the razor. I went on my trip to the coast, and this is what I get. But nice, it's going away. Man. Nice, nice. Don't, nice. don't need this for the spring. How long were you on the coast? Oh, a couple of days, but, you know, stuff grows fast. How cold? I know, right? Me, I'm <laughs> a, it, I, it, I would have something like that, like, oh, we did gone for a day or two? I'm like, no, nah, six weeks. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> People would pick me up on the island and cast away. They'd be like, oh, my God, this guy's been here for months. I'm like, well, I've been here for 15 years, and this is what I have. <laughs> and it'd be just like three long strands of hair down to my like, chest. Yeah. Um, uh, like that's no good, though. Wish. That's good, though. But, um, yeah. yeah, so uh, before we came on, Scotty, um, we were kind of talking a little bit about this and that, and you got in touch with some, some former uh, – were they clients with you, or are they – at and one friends. point. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, you know, as the community stays in touch, you know. Yep, of course. Obviously, you know, it's like bumping to each other, cross paths maybe annually somewhere, somehow, that kind of, that kind of thing. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, um, but they have been in the game now for, you know, quite some time, I think maybe coaching different spots. Well, I finally opened a gym last year, and uh, um, so, uh, anyway, I uh, just heard this week that they had someone come in to do an intro and mm -hmm. he passed away a few hours later. I'm not sure if it was in his sleep or just when he got home, but he had a massive coronary mm -hmm. and he was like mid forties. I want to say, I don't think he was particularly out of shape. I don't really have a lot of details, you know, but, yeah. but, um, uh, you know, this kind of goes back. I mean, really got me thinking a little bit about what, um, gyms do as, intro and so what what i know that they did was something that we we also did years ago uh it was a workout called baseline old school heads in the community might remember it at least on the west coast um uh, i think the workout came from la crossfit andy petranic it was a simple shorty you know it wouldn't cause uh you know any experienced person any grief but it was one round for time of either a 500 meter row or a 400 meter run it would just depend and then it was 40 air squats 30 sit-ups 20 push-ups 10 pull-ups or jumping pull-ups um and that was the workout mm -hmm. and basically i the way it worked you know at least a lot of gyms used it as kind of their you know you come in the door you talk to the talk to them you warm them up and that's their first free intro workout yeah but, um like so we we used it back maybe 2008 2009 yep. maybe a little bit into 2010 but um just you know we stopped using it because i just wasn't comfortable like it was it would put the hurt on people i mean like i don't know i mean there was one time i can remember specifically we were i was working out by myself in the back of the gym and it was whoever our coach was at the time and and then this guy had come in to do it and he was in pain he's lay, you know laying between the wall and the floor just writhing and i was really kind of <laughs> concerned thinking do i need to call 911 oh here, wow know? and uh, that wasn't the first time something you know people be out you know, puking in the gutter and you know but this was was kind of ironic so this this particular guy that i reference here he he uh once he, he wasn't able to deal with signing up he was too mentally you know whacked by this workout <laughs> he had to come back the next day to actually enroll when he was better uh -huh. he's actually to this day he's still in the community he owns a company a clothing company in the crossfit world he's you know became somewhat of a monster but that was his that was his start i thought he was going to die in the gym yeah uh, <laughs> yeah man um anyway uh yeah and uh so it's like this, this this just can't be good i mean i think it's a perfect storm because they're all simple body weight movements. Uh, it's a perfect opportunity to go anaerobic. And especially with guys, you know, it's just push ups. You know, the ego kind of gets the best of them. They want to complete. And you find out, you know, as you get, usually it's like people be cruising along pretty good. They get around the push ups, uh, and y'all, you see it, you know. And, uh, man, but in the, apparently this was more than, you know, this guy's life force, you know, had left in it. Um, I mean, of course, we don't know it's connected, but I mean, have, you'd have to believe it is probably. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, certainly it would have had something to play a part in it. So, you know, yeah. certainly feel for, you know, 
obviously the family and Evan and but also you know um, gym owners too. You know they're you know how many times is you know yeah you, you don't know. But on the other hand, you know I think you know practices like that. I mean, what are we accomplishing when we you know <laughs> basically throw people you know smack people in the face like that? Yeah. I mean, all right, so first things first, like obviously we talked about this off air. So when I first heard this, I was, you know, a gasp. So don't obviously take my lack of, uh, uh, you know, holy crap right now as not being empathetic because I was like, holy shit. Because the first thing I think of is, man, that sucks so bad. You're just trying to get in shape, trying to change your life. And then, you know, that's it. So first off, obviously, yeah. there's that perspective of this. You know, you yeah. actually, you, you know, there could have been a million and one other things that this person could have been doing that would have been detrimental to their lives. And to have somebody trying to improve themselves, step outside their comfort zone, and then pass away, it's just that's just terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the next thing that comes to mind is obviously an acceptance of like, okay, this happened. And um, a willingness to understand all sides and all perspectives. Because I think, especially nowadays, the first thing everybody thinks of is, well, you know, is this person experienced? Was this, you know, uh, was this guy in shape enough to do the workout? What, you know, like, who, who can we burn at the stake? Who can we point the finger right. at? You know, first off, person passed away. Let's, 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 let's take that in consideration right away. And there's a lot of Everybody in that whole situation is probably profoundly affected. The family, their friends, the gym, the gym owners. There's so many people I can't even think of. Right. Once we go through that period, then we start to assess and learn something from this. So that hopefully I can learn something, you can learn something. Obviously, the owners can learn something going forward. Some questions that I would consider is... Um, how are they screening a person in terms of a potential client to allow them to do this workout? Because in my mind, I I look at that workout and for particular individuals, I'm like, okay, that's not terrible. Because if I have a really deconditioned person, they get on the row and they're going 500 meters. And again, this is me going through this workout with them. Get on the row and row nice and easy for two minutes. At a sustainable pace. And when you get off, you're going to get up and you're going to just start doing some squats, probably, you know, good depth, good pacing, and we want to make this sustainable. And I'm going to make sure that they get good depth as, you know, and good technique based upon that individual and so on and so forth in the entire workout. But you notice that I'm also making a lot of assumptions here. I'm I'm thinking of, of a deconditioned athlete. Uh, maybe overweight, like I'm, I'm putting worst case scenario stuff in here, right? Um, mm-hmm. And in the back of my mind saying, I'm just going to give this person something that gives them a little bit of a feeling I worked out, but I know when I, they get out of the workout, they're going to be like, okay, I can get in my car and I can go home. Mm-hmm. Now, if we ask these, pe- you know, these coaches, how did it go? What was the warm up like? What did they seem like? If they were like, dude, they were fine. Uh, there was no problem there. Obviously, one, I'm going to, you know, just question what their judgment might be for maybe momentarily. And then they come back with, Hey, we've been doing this for a long time. We've worked with deconditioned athletes before we look at the, we look a little bit of the track record. And if, if the mm-hmm. track record says they're not killing people, then we, you know, we just say, okay, you know what? Like, Hey, shit happens, man. He could have been mm-hmm. a ticking time bomb and this could have just been anywhere. And you mm-hmm. happen to be the people that, that he happened to stroll into. It could have been at a planet fitness he could have been running around a track. Shit happens. And yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, it and totally it just could have sucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I don't exactly. Yeah, those are my thoughts. You know, I mean, because you can certainly coach someone to do that workout in a mm-hmm. more sustainable way, and I have I have no idea, you know, how any of that went. Um, exactly. You know, but again, um, like if you don't, I could remember from our own experience with it because we didn't. You know, we've never been the type of gym to be. You know, super, smashing people. Yeah, you know, so we tried to yoke people back enough to keep them steady and, you know, good form and whatnot. And even then, sometimes, you know, just it's that perfect dose of intensity to, you know, when someone isn't ready. And, it, uh, 
I, yeah, I, but, I think you hit on something earlier too. It's it's not necessarily them going like I see the most jacked up people get is they get that localized muscular fatigue and, and build up, and that just throws them into a stupor. And I think not as much about like uh, uh, what affects them is like their heart rate is up. I think it's the response to the exercise mentally, the stress of it. I think that could be way too much for people. I think right. obviously the exercise itself is like, all right, anybody could probably do this. But if you have a perception in your brain that like you're going to die, that heightens everything. And then yeah. all of a sudden that molehill becomes a mountain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you guys do as an introduction right now, Scott? I don't know if we ever yeah, talked so, about that. No, no, I don't know. At least not anytime recently. I mean, yeah. uh, any of it's obviously changes from that. Yeah, but, us as well. But uh, what we're, what we are doing, um, we kind of have a bit of a screening questionnaire where we kind of try to, you know, weed people out a little bit and then they have a, uh, a, a intro. It's, we do charge a dollar. That's only, awesome. Uh, because we find then, oddly enough, people almost always show up where when you don't charge anything. <laughs> it's amazing, uh, but it's true. Uh, and then uh, typically we go mostly through a warm-up. We don't typically do, I mean, there's always you know, some talking to the person, finding out their goals and, you know, and, and all that. And yeah. Talking about what we do and, and, and that sort of thing. And then, you know, uh, injury history, any preconditions. And we really just kind of go through our warm-up, which is like a 15-minute process. Kind of also lets uh, us see how they move. So mm -hmm. we kind of know, you know, if they do decide to join, you know, yep. where what's going to be most appropriate for them. And yep. then uh, possibly a small workout, which is, you know, again, that's kind of like what you said. It's something that gives them, makes them feel like they did something, but um, they can walk out of here and be, be just fine, you know? Yeah. How do you get how do you get that dollar for them? <laughs> do they charge that or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so basically you're like, all right, this is gonna be a dollar, let's take down your information and we're gonna charge you a buck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it also kind of gets them in and gets them committed to not kind of like putting uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and we, it, it, it really it, it actually screens out a lot of BS. Um, yeah. you know, because when you have somebody and they, they book one, then you can pretty much guarantee they're there and since doing that, the conversion rate is really, really, really good because if wow. they get that far, you're pretty sure you're I mean, basically you're not waste, we're not wasting a lot of time, and and that's been kind of a more recent, well, Scott, more recent thing. I, I'm I'm gonna adopt that idea. I think I was we were thinking about trying to do something like I think the your first class is one dollar. I think that would be a really cool kind of deal. That's really a good idea because again, we've been doing on ramp. So back in the day. When we um, first doing CrossFit, and our, our CrossFit has been open since 2008. This is our 10th year. We did a three for free where they would come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, either, uh, it was at, either at 6 a.m. or I think it was like 7 p.m. And then Monday would be like the squat and then like Cindy. And then Tuesday would be like uh, in like a 10-minute Cindy and it would be like with ring rows and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Tuesday would be like we would do deadlift and the pulling movements, whatever, and it would be um, – I don't know if it was Helen. It might have been like a variation of Helen. And then Wednesday would be whatever. And this, again, this was before I, I was just coaching, wasn't running the gym. And then it's evolved. So it was through all three classes. Most people would come to three and then they would sign up because obviously the thought behind it is if you're coming to those three classes, you're going to go right into Thursday and start, start, start crossfitting. Um, and again, I think what happens is um, because we were only the game in town, that's pretty much what everybody did. The more and more people – uh, more and more we had competition, the more people would call up and be like, I want to get started. And like, oh, we have this three for free. After three classes, you can start the regular classes. And they would go, okay, cool. Hang up the phone, call up the next one, be like, hey, these people said I have to start in three days. Can you get me started now? And then, you know, the game changes. You know, obviously they're mm -hmm. like, okay, well, if this person wants to get started right now. So a lot of people, you know, went the other direction. They said, okay, we're going to get them into their first class right away. You're going to use a PVC and you're just going to go right into class. I'm like, I can't, I, I can't justify that. There's no way I'm doing that. Yeah. So we went the opposite direction. We did a one, I think we did a two week on ramp. So every day at 7 PM, the same people would show up. And the problem with that was, um, people's schedules suck. And yeah, I think we did yeah. it for a few months and I was like, all right, well, at least those people that went in would be a high retention. They weren't a high retention. 
It's just what it is, what it is. You know what I mean? And they, they, they went through the on-ramp and then they didn't stay with it. Um, and again, this is based upon our clientele, our population down here in South Florida, transient. It happens, right? Mm-hmm. So then it became, I think, a Monday, Tuesday. And right now I do a one-on-one with everybody. That's it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and usually I'm pretty flexible with it. If they want to get started, I do a one-on-one. It's free. And, um, uh, the first thing I do is I walk through the door after they sign their waiver, I go in, on any medications, pre-existing conditions. Obviously we covered that already. And then, mm-hmm. um, the first thing we do, you know, obviously a uh, very similar to what you guys do, we go through a warm up. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same every time. Um, but it is again, an assessment of the individual's abilities and you, and, and again, this is more intuitive to me. So like if I sat there and, and thought about it and wrote, write it down, like, okay, I can get most of that down. But a lot of it is me standing in front of that person and assessing, is this one person, one, physically capable of doing this and two, mentally capable of doing this? Because I've had people come in and I'm like, you're not ready yet. Like I, 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 would, I would be doing you a disservice if I kept you here any longer. And it was, mm-hmm. it's really freaking hard because a person's like, are you seriously throwing me out? I'm like, yeah. And, I'm, and, and it kills me because I'm like, I want this person to respect me and like me and this is a new relationship. But I'm like, this is not going to work. Like people yeah. come in like hungover after the night. I had a few drinks last night. I'm feeling good. We're good to go. We're, we're, we're good. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not good. If you want to do this, you're going to come tomorrow or another day. They're like, uh, okay, never come back. And you know what? I just saved them time and myself time. Mm-hmm. Or – our philosophy on that first day is get them exposure to the squat, to the deadlift, and to the press, and the variations in between. So we'll do a warm-up where it's going to prepare them for all of those things. We do a little bit of breathing work just to kind of organize them and see how capable they are of, of um, p- performing in those positions. And again, something that we've always talked about is core control. Does this person have the basic capabilities of core control? And as soon as I'm able to d- determine that yes or no, that kind of leads the way going forward in the rest of the workout because it might be literally we're working with an empty barbell and then you're um, – and, and going forward, I'm telling them, okay, you're going to work on this stuff. Don't even worry about going heavy for now. For the first month, two months, three months, you might be working really good core control with very light weight, but there's a reason why you're here and thank God you came into this gym because if you were to go anywhere else – you would have had barbell thrown in your back and you would have been a, a ticking time bomb. But here mm-hmm. we know and understand that it's time, it's progression, etc. Everybody goes through the same metabolic conditioning. It's 30 seconds assault bike, 30 seconds rest, 30 seconds ring rows, 30 seconds rest, 30 seconds burpees, 30 seconds rest, three sets. The idea behind that and again, by the way, that could be scaled to no push-up burpees, et cetera. The, 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 as I'm coaching them through it, the first thing I tell them is this is going to be a sustainable effort for 30 seconds. Then you're going to rest 30 seconds, and you're going to repeat that sustainable effort. So when I put your scores up, I want to see the same score in every go. I would say 95% of the time, most people get through. They're walking around afterward. Whew, that was good. All right, good job. Awesome. Let's go ahead and sign up, whatever. of the time, the person gets done with the second round and they go, I'm done. And I go, okay, that's it. You're done for the day. (laughs) And that's it. And, um, you know, I give them, and then we go for a 200 meter walk afterward. We talk about exactly what we did. We, um, we kind of talk about options going forward. I get, I pick their brain. How did you like it? You know, do you see yourself doing this? They ask me questions. How many days a week should I be coming? Uh, do you guys do anything about nutrition? And it, it, out there, it, it kind of – now that they've – now they're like super talkative. They want to know more about this, et cetera. And mm-hmm. I'm yeah. excited too because they got to experience it. It's not just me describing it. They went into it and did it, and I always congratulate. And that's, this is something I, I try to make a big deal of. Every time they go through the on-ramp, I give them a round of applause and congratulate them for completing their first CrossFit workout. Um, and I, nice. I do try to do that. And when it, when it's more than one person, it, it's a lot easier because <laughs> right. then everybody yeah, yeah. claps. But if it's just me clapping at somebody, it's a little bit awkward, but I, I do make it about them and I want them to understand that it's a huge step in the right direction, regardless if they sign up or not, like, yo, at least you tried this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the way we do it. And, uh, you know, again, it's always evolving. I always throw different things in based upon the person I'm always doing, learning more about the psychology of, of the people coming in through the door and, and how they could be pre like screened almost to know that this person is not capable of doing this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, the, the, if, if in an ideal world, Scott, obviously, what would your intro to CrossFit look like? Or are you doing it already? Uh, well, I wouldn't say I do the ideal just because of the practicality of it, you know, being, mm -hmm. uh, a, a very individual believer, individual yep. attention, you know, ideally I would get to do quite a full assessment of a lot of things before someone got started. So I could really direct them, you know, to the most uh, appropriate starting point. And yep. I think we would hit all those, I hit all those pieces a little bit, but it could be very very tailored but you know that is very labor intensive time intensive and would be rather costly um mm -hmm. by by very, its very nature so it isn't the starting point for most every now and then you know a lot of people will come in and seek me out in particular and we pretty much will do those sorts of things but, yeah um, yeah i mean That's not that point. you need to assess every last thing in the world i think you can glean uh <laughs> but no, i kind of understanding what what a person's foods look like? What's their stress level like? Where where you know where's their nervous system at? You know. Yep. Um, I do like that then, questionnaire though, Scott. Do they fill something out? Uh, the, the questionnaire before they. Yeah, a little little online thing, and it basically just asks some simple questions that we know fit the profile. You know. Yep. Um, basically, uh, I don't have it all memorized, but it, uh, we ask you. Know, do you live or work nearby within something? And, you know, you can certainly elect to train here if you don't, but we know that a vast, vast majority of people, if, if we're not in close proximity to one or other, one or the other home or work, it's, it won't work out long-term. Yep. That's um, a good point. And, and uh, we say, you know, the range of what the rates for classes would be, you know, is this within your budget? You know, that Another good point. Some of the people that don't, yeah. you know, are just, price shopping and they know what they're in for. It's no, no surprise at any point. And then, um, uh, do you write down, I can, do, do you write down, can you afford $150 to change your life? Is that your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Which, yeah, which I absolutely can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're writing, yeah. no, goodbye. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I can uh, send you a link to it. Yeah, it's, it's um, a, I would love to and, look through that, man, because I think not only does that obviously pre-screen, but I think the individual is being pre-screened as well to know what they're going getting themselves into. And, yeah. and there, again, I think it also creates more buy-in because the person that is going to be filling out that questionnaire is, is asking themselves and bringing awareness to themselves of, wait, do I live? Do I live by this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course. I, yeah, I drive this by practical it every day. For me. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Can it's... I afford this? All right. Let me let me like look at my finances right now because I'm going to try this and I'm going to gas everybody up. Like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm like, I can't afford my rent, let alone doing this. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It really it makes I think that it, they basically are you know questions that make you reflect a little bit on yeah your situation. Because, I love that. You know, we can all do things. You know, rather impulse. We're online. We're looking around. We have a thought in our head. Oh, yeah, this sounds good. Yeah. Well, wait and, a minute, you know. <laughs> that's a good point there, Scott, is that a lot of the shit that, that goes on today is marketed toward people being impulsive. And it, as much as I'm like, all right, well, that's just, it, it, you know, it is what it is today. And we got to accept mm -hmm. what it is. It kind of makes me feel a little dirty, you know? Yeah. So I, I got to balance the two because I, obviously there could be people who are like they're motivated right then and there to sign up to change their lives and I'm going to take an app opportunity to do that. But then I know that there's other people who are like 2 o'clock in the morning. They can't sleep. And they're like, yeah, whatever. I'll buy this. And mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, hey, all right. When are you ready to start? They're like, I really didn't want to do that. It's, it's like six hours later. They're like coherent now. They're like, yeah, I was just kind of like in a drunk stupor. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll change my life. I'm like, no, now I don't want to do it. I'm like, all right. Well, yeah. You know, 
Exactly. Trying so, to get at 2 a.m. <laughs> I know, exactly. So if I know that I'm getting a, a new registration at 2 a.m., I'm like, this I, this isn't for real. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's just a, yeah. <laughs> That's a bad start. I know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I would love to look over that screen and, uh, uh, you know, you know, maybe revisit that later on as well. Um, yeah. In, in terms of, uh, of, of, of starting up, is there one thing in particular that you would do different had you have the resources or uh, space or coaches? If, if it really didn't matter about any of those things, what would be one thing that you would want to change right now based upon uh, some of the things that we were talked about in, in, in particular? Oh, like that would make the whole experience more valuable. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and I'll think of it too. I'll put you on the spot, but I'll get some time to myself. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of wish I had um, a way to get everyone sort of, if I could get accurate baseline on like HRV and some of those things with people, just so wow. I have an idea of what kind of person we're dealing with. Yep. Um, you know, and logistically to do that is, you know, it's not crazy difficult or crazy expensive anymore, but it's a definitely, you know, you'd have to educate people up front. Not everyone's aware of why that even matters and so on and so forth. But. Yeah. I think in my mind that also almost becomes a selling point too. Like, I, like, you know how, like when people like get super bought in when they, um, do a body fat testing or something like that. Like that's mm -hmm. the number one thing people ask me, like, what's my body fat? Right. It, it carries such, you know, uh, a huge weight and attachment to it. Right. So it's almost exactly. like, it's almost like, um, if you did an HRV in the beginning and you told them like, well, this should be here because like, that means you're more balanced, you're more fit, whatever it might be. Maybe that does allow them to be more bought in in general. So not only are you are seeing where this person is under the hood, but you're also telling them like, Hey man, like this is where you're at and this is where we would love you to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually not yeah. bad at all. Yeah, it is something to think about. And then as, I, as you mentioned, you know, thinking pie in the sky, but then it's like, well, this wouldn't really be that expensive at all. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be that logistically difficult. Yeah. Either, and again, like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's up in cost of whatever, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks to do something like that. But how many more clients could you potentially get by everyone going in and saying, okay, this is where you're at. You know what I mean? Um, I know for me particularly is, um, again, just thinking about like the questionnaire a little bit is, is ask, is being able to ask them a question that gets them out of where they are and starts getting them in the mindset of where they possibly could be. Because when mm. you start doing that for a person, it, they stop thinking about all the consequences and shit they have to give up the money. I have to get here on time. This is going to suck. You know, just like being able to sit down with for 15 minutes, either before, or after, like after a questionnaire or just shooting the shit, but like getting them to understand that like, listen, man, where you are right now is not where you're going to be in 30 days from now, 90 days from now, two years from now. Because when, if, if that person was signing up, they would already be signed up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The person who's, the person who had, had been working out for two years would have no problem signed up for that original membership. But the person mm -hmm. who's signing up for the membership has no clue. They don't know that person. The, the, yeah. They don't know that person few, yet because they haven't yeah. become that person yet. That's now that's really good. Find some way to yeah, and again, I, I, shift the, yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I'll play around with that stuff. I mean, again, like think, I think about it. Yeah, I think these conversations that we have, even though we're like, oh wow, we you know we we do this and this and this, it just makes you look at it from a different angle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like yeah. you know, just looking at these basic topics of just an intro class could profoundly change a lot of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's why it's important to have sit down and have conversations like these because. Um, you know, we might be doing something uh, this certain way and, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the reason why is because we've always done it that way. And we always got to, right. There's a certain, yeah, we always got to kind of put the spotlight on something be like, is this the best that we can be doing with this particular thing? And, and, uh, if it, if it isn't okay, let's, let's reassess. 
Yeah. It's really cool. I think those are really good. Yeah, cool. Really good there. Scott, you got anything else? No, I think that'll do it for today. All right, brother. Well, yeah. we have uh, some things to ponder and some things to work on. But in the meantime, I'm Sean LaFlock. You can get me at Sean at CrossFitDaraBeach.com. Scott Agnes, you get me at Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. Beautiful, Scotty. Get some, get, get some razor on that face. I'll get some razor, yeah, and maybe some sun eventually, but not, no time soon, unfortunately. <laughs> It'll be here before you know it, Scott. Take care, brother. All right, take care. Thank you.